a warm welcome to Euro Wizard, a magical sleep saga inspired by the world of Harry Potter, where you are the main character. As you take a moment to get comfortable, remind yourself that this is your story, and there are no limits to what you can add to this adventure. Anyone that you meet along the way throughout this saga can be whoever you want them to be. They might be people from your own life, a famous figure that you admire, or a character from the books. So be sure to bring along your own unique imagination. Let your thoughts turn to those of magic, wonder, and adventure as we continue our Harry Potter sleep saga. As soon as you feel your eyes close, you open them again. A peace and quiet surrounds you now, and the golden valley is no more. Instead, a rich blue night washes over you, and the light of the full moon beams into your window and the train is completely still. You have arrived. From outside your window, you see a train station with a single platform. You watch stars beginning to reveal themselves, one by one, backed by a dark night. The moon illuminates the frosted concrete below and gives off a silver glitter. Thin, bare trees are dusted with a light evening frost. And as you watch the first students jumping off the train and onto the platform, you can see their breath in clouds of white. You flip open your suitcase and pull out a thick pair of gloves and a woolly hat in your favourite colour. Your friend has woken up now and there is a silent anticipation in the air. You place your animal in their cage, collect your belongings and say goodbye to your warm and cosy carriage. You wander down the corridor and slowly step out of the train and join in the hustle and bustle of happy, eager students. You are met with a cool breeze that is refreshing to breathe in after a long journey inside. It is crisp, but not too cold, and your gloves keep your hands and fingers toasty and warm. The steam from the engine mingles in the air and creates a misty, enchanting atmosphere. The moonlight reflects onto the train and transforms the matte crimson into a deep, glistening scarlet, coupled with a rich black and lined with luminous gold. Around the station is a small collection of grey houses pieced together with bricks of different sizes and topped with dark brown tiles. Each one has a red door coupled with two square windows on each side. Thick plant life climbs the walls 
and spreads across the grey brick, with one or two white flowers poking through the green. A black and red iron bridge connects each side of the platform. As you shuffle on the concrete, unsure of where to go next, you turn to see the white moustached conductor beaming down at you with a gleam in his eye. He offers to take your briefcase and your animal and put them with the rest of your belongings. These will all be taken care of, he tells you, and will be waiting for you in your dormitory. You thank the conductor once again and bid farewell to your animal for now. You and your friend wander through the thin layer of mist swirling a foot above the ground, and you join up with a large group of witches and wizards congregating at the end of the station. Above you is the silhouette of many owls flying off into the night, backed by the white orb of the moon. Then you hear a friendly voice calling out instructions. You recognize it immediately. Through the crowd, the gentle giant catches your eye, giving you a secret smile and a mischievous wink. He calls out to all first years to follow him through the woodland grove. As the congregation shuffles along, you and your friend race around the outside of the group and catch up with your new friend. The giant greets you with a hand on your shoulder and, without breaking his stride, begins to guide you down the woodland path, full of loose twigs and fallen leaves. He asks you all about your first adventure on the express, and if you manage to see his dear friend Norbert on the way. You tell him all about the wonderful dragon display, and reveal your excitement for the sorting ceremony. He gives a low chuckle, remembering when he too first arrived at this magical castle. Nothing like it, he tells you, nothing like it. High above you, more and more stars twinkle with delight and the moonlight dabbles through the trees, guiding your way in tiny spotlights on the forest floor. As you emerge from the end of the grove, you arrive at the edge of an enormous lake, bordered by thick grass, with a dusting of frost on the tips of green. At the edge of the lake, there is a collection of long wooden piers. Lined up along the piers are small rowing boats, with a golden lantern hanging at the head of each one. Some of the other students are already jumping confidently into the boats. With the giant's hand on your back, and your best friend by your side, you are led to the very end of the pier and towards a much bigger rowing boat. The gentle giant picks you up with ease and places you in the boat. You take a deep breath, sensing that the castle is not far away. The boat sways vigorously 
as the giant steps aboard, making himself comfortable towards the rear. Upon these boats lies a powerful enchantment, he tells you, making it impossible for them to tip, even with a great big clumsy giant sitting in them, he says, pointing a huge finger at his own chest, a proud smile on his face. When all the students are safely inside, the oars move themselves into place and begin to row by themselves. You feel a gentle jerk as the boat sets off, but in a few seconds you are drifting effortlessly over calm waters. There is the sensation of floating gliding along the never-ending lake, illuminated by the crystal moon, a soft breeze on your cheeks. There is a light mist rising from the lake, making it difficult to see in front of you, but this only adds to the mystery. A lantern hangs at the front of your boat, and as you look behind, you see an infinite collection of these soft yellow lights, like tiny fireflies following you on this magical boat ride. The silver stars pepper the black, coupled with a hint of purple and sapphire that outlines the swirling galaxy that is watching over you tonight. You allow yourself to enjoy this moment of serenity, of total tranquility. The sound of the paddles lapping in the water and the stillness of the night creates an atmosphere of complete peace. And then, as if by magic, the mist evaporates, almost in slow motion, revealing the most beautiful sight of all. Straight ahead of you, sitting atop a high and jagged rock formation is the castle that you call home. Curved towers of gothic grey stand high and proud, creating a silhouette in the moonlight, backed by the snow-capped mountains in the distance. Golden orbs pulse from the windows, overlooking the castle grounds and beaming down over the lake, like a collection of lighthouses guiding you home. As you gaze in wonder at this incredible sight, you know now that after years of searching, of waiting, you have finally found where you belong. Your best friend puts their arm around you, pulling you into a tight embrace. They whisper to you that there is nowhere else they would rather be and nobody else they would rather be with. You could not be more grateful to have this special person with you tonight as you both begin your journey into magic.
a warmth flows through you now, and you know that no matter what happens and no matter where life takes you, this wonderful castle and its enchanting world will always be here for you. The tall towers draw closer now, as the boats gently row to a new shore, stopping in a perfect line. Ahead of you, many golden torches illuminate the concrete steps, climbing up the steep rock face. Your eyes follow the zigzagging steps, up and up, until they reach the pointed silhouette of the enchanting castle. Your gentle giant takes the lead, guiding your group up the steps. On your climb, you talk happily with your best friend as you reminisce on the wonderful memories of the day. You imagine what possibly lies in store for you behind the castle doors. In what feels like seconds, you reach the very top of the stairs. Straight ahead of you are two huge iron doors forming an arched entrance and parted by a thin crack, a golden beam shimmering through. Far down to your left, you look back out over the lake and the silver glimmer of the moon dances on the water. The air up here is clean and fresh and absolutely magical. In front of you, the huge hands of the giant push open the doors, and your group is swallowed by the golden light as you shuffle inside the echoey halls. Once more, you are guided up a set of concrete steps, and as you reach the top, there, sitting in front of a thick wooden door, is a small grey cat with black stripes along its back. The cat has piercing, all-seeing eyes. It has clearly lived here for a very long time. The cat jumps forward, and your eyes widen in amazement as mid-air it transforms in the blink of an eye. Standing before you now is a tall, thin, elderly witch, a professor here, and the deputy headmistress. She dons an emerald robe, topped with a black, pointy hat. Her stern but gentle eyes reveal an unrivaled wisdom. The headmistress flicks her head around the group, taking in every single fresh-faced student in front of her. Suddenly, her cat-like eyes meet yours, and you feel a nervous but excited energy in your stomach. 
For a fraction of a second, you could have sworn that she smiled at you. Standing in her presence, you feel completely protected. There is an undeniable love running through her. She would do anything to keep each and every one of you safe. In the next moment, she tells you to move through the great hall and assemble in front of the large brown hat. The sorting ceremony is about to begin. With a delicate flick of her wand, the large wooden door swings open effortlessly. As you walk through the door, you are met with a new life, and a buzz of excitement erupts from the many witches and wizards around you. The hall is made of grey stone, with gargoyles holding small braziers of fire on their backs, crackling away. There are four long trestle tables side by side. Above each table is a different set of banners. From left to right you have the silver serpent backed by an emerald green. Next is the banner of the bronze eagle coupled with dark blue. Then comes the gold lion on a red banner over the third table. And finally, to your right, the black badger mingled with a dark yellow. The headmistress leads you down the hall. The walls rise above you into a high arched ceiling, but the top of the ceiling cannot be seen, for in its place is a beautiful recreation of the night sky. There sits the pearl moon, and the black night is peppered with silver stars that twinkle in the darkness. Just below this bewitched sky is a collection of floating candles, hundreds of tiny orange flames bobbing up and down. Your group stops at the end of the hall, in front of a small stool. Atop the stool is an old brown leather hat, slightly dusty with a wide brim. This is the sorting hat. It has played a vital role in the destinies of every witch and wizard that has walked through these doors, and tonight it will decide your fate. Behind the stool is another table full of all the professors who teach at the school. In the middle is a beautiful hand-carved golden throne, and there sits the headmaster. His long white hair and flowing beard are almost the same length. He is an old man now, but his magnetic aura captivates you, and his presence in the room is undeniable. There is a childlike curiosity still living within him, and his piercing blue eyes sweep around the room behind half-moon spectacles, coupled with a warm, satisfied smile. Your gentle giant joins the professor's table now, and the deputy headmistress stands beside the sorting hat. The headmaster stands up 
and taps his spoon against his small sherry glass. The great hall falls into silence. He welcomes you, one and all, at last to this magical castle. Here is a place of enchantment and wonder, a place of adventure, of trials and exciting challenges. Here you will put your skills and your character to the test, embarking on your own unique journey to become a great student of magic. His eyes flick to meet yours. He tilts his head and gives you a mischievous smile with the corner of his mouth, followed by a subtle wink. You feel your cheeks flush and a wave of nerves passes through your stomach. And without further ado, he adds, it is time to begin the sorting ceremony.